Hi, it's Pastor Bob here. Glad to, glad to see you all through this uh, medium. I want to share a story with you from Mark chapter 14, which I read recently. It's actually found in verses 3 through 9, if you want to look it up. It's a story where a woman named Mary breaks a, a very expensive bottle of perfume and, and pours the perfume over Jesus' feet. And after she does that, some of the folks there get upset. In fact, in, in Matthew's gospel, it tells us that the people that got upset were actually Jesus' disciples. And, and the word that scripture uses, it says they were indignant with her. And they say this, why this waste? This perfume could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. It says in Mark, they rebuked her. And the idea of that word is that, you know, they scolded her. The image that I get is of a child who's misbehaved, that that's how they're treating her. But Jesus comes to Mary's aid, her defense, really. And he, she, he defends not just her, but her actions. And he says, leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing. As I read this uh, short story, uh, God brought a couple of things to my mind, and I just want to share those with you. My first thought was, isn't it easy for us to criticize others when they do something? It's so easy, at least for me, to do nothing and yet criticize folks for doing something. And, and, and I have to be honest and say, I was, I was convicted uh, as a leader how often I can decide for a, for a person that what they're doing is the wrong thing. It's not the, the, the right thing. And, and God showed me that's not his desire. The truth is, I want to encourage people to do the things that God is calling them to do, not be someone who tells them they shouldn't be doing it. That leads really into my second thought. In Jesus' response, he says, only in Mark, these words are recorded, she did what she could. I was struck by these words for a couple of reasons. First, isn't it awesome to know that God has prepared you and me, he's empowered you and me to do certain things. But the truth is he hasn't called me to do what he wants you to do. And he hasn't called you to do what he wants me to do. The truth is his design is for each of us to do what he wants us to do. And then together, as his body, as we do those things, his will, his desire will be accomplished. The second thing that I realize is that God calls you and others to do things in a way that may be different than he calls me to do them. And once again, I was convicted that it's, it's not up to me to tell people to do it the way I would do it. It's very clear that in a, in a body like Community Alliance Church, everyone has different personalities. They have different approaches to doing things. And, and certainly we have different spiritual gifts as well. So God just reminded me, it's not important. In fact, it's not even what he desires for people to do things the way I would do them. And I want to encourage you with that as well. It may be that you see some other people doing some things and they're not doing it the way you would do them, that might be exactly what God wants in this situation. Lastly, you know, at this time in history, uh, there's a lot of things I think that we all want to do, but we can't because of the fact that we're in isolation. And, and, and this may be a simplistic reminder, but, but I, I felt like God, you know, he reminded me and so I wanna remind you. God is not going to hold us accountable for something that we cannot do. So if we're not able to physically do something because of the isolation that we're in, that's okay. What he does want to be able to do is say about each one of us, you know, he did what I was calling him to do during that period of time. She did what I was asking her to do during that period of time. The truth is, I, I don't know what that means for you. You know, for me, I've made more phone calls to people at Community Alliance Church than I have in a long time. I've also called my family a lot more than I have in the past. I've spent a lot of times in virtual meetings, and I've actually prepared some video logs, which you're watching right now. I, you know, I've, I've gone for long walks with my wife, which I've never really done before on a regular basis. And I've certainly spent more time reading and praying uh, than I have before this uh, pandemic occurred. And I'm convinced that those are the very things that God wants me to do. 
And so what I'm asking uh, God for is that, that he would give you a clear direction on what it is he wants you to be doing right now. And then to give you freedom from not stressing out over those things that you cannot do. You know, my hope and my prayer is that as God leads each of us to do the things he wants us to do, and as he empowers us to do them, we're going to see people impacted in a way that we never would have seen if our life had remained normal. That's my hope and that's my prayer for you and and for me as well. I certainly look forward to getting together again soon as a church body. I so miss that. And I know many of you do as well. I look forward to it. Until then, I'm asking God to give you faith to continue to trust him and, and, and also the opportunity to do the things he's calling you to do. It's been great to spend these few minutes with you. I look forward to seeing you very soon. Take care and God bless.